6 p.m. I'd like to open up the meeting. Um, are there any adjustments to the select board agenda? I don't have anything. Okay. Um, any public comment? Okay. So um, we're going to be waiting for um, some other folks to show up for the Route 14 commuter. Um, I assume that Skip Lindsay was going to be here to talk about the energy plan. Um, so we'll hold off on that also. So I guess what I would do is make a motion that we approve the bills to the town. Second. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Um, and then I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes for the uh, September 9th, 2019 uh, select board meeting and the September 16th, 2019 special select board meeting. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Um, so let's see, we're going to jump around here a little bit. Um, the animal control officer, um, I spoke with Kim and um, I told him basically that, um, you know, we, the town was not worried about any liability over the action that happened with his dog. And as far as I was concerned that he handled the situation with the other dog owner in the in a way that should have been done, so he's setting a great example. Um, and that I felt that he was a, a very valuable asset to the town and it would be very unfortunate if he resigned. Mm -hmm. So he said he would check with the other dog owner, which is his neighbor, um, and if they were okay with him staying on as the animal control officer, then he would stay on as the animal control officer. That's the same way. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, these things happen. Yeah, it was it was an unfortunate thing, but I think you know he handled it as as anyone should have, whether you're the animal control officer or not. So there was a message from him um, last night uh, that he um, had spoken with the other dog owner um, and that everything was okay, so he was willing to continue. Rescind, rescind his letter. Yeah, good. Yeah, agree. That's a good. He does a good job, and that's. Yeah. So we don't need to reappoint him then? We don't have to accept his letter. Do we? I, mean, I never saw that. Right. I never saw a letter either. Okay, resignation. Right. Yeah. yeah. All right. So he is active animal right. control officer. Sir. Unless okay. you want the job. <laughs> I guess, so when he came and spoke to you, did he, I mean, he should have sent us a letter. He should have. Yeah. So he did resign to me. Okay. We never got an official letter, so as far as I'm concerned. Okay. Yeah. All right. So I'll ask him if he wants to be officially reappointed. Um, he doesn't have to be if you didn't accept his resignation. Yeah. Okay, we did. Plus, plus, even if he gave us a letter, we have to accept that. Okay, just okay. storm out the okay. door and slam it. Okay, okay. you can always, you know, have a cooling off right. period before you. Okay. So he is still still the animal control. Okay. okay. Yeah. Good boy. Well, <laughs> too bad you can't get rid of your job that way. <laughs> so. Are you Nick? I am Nick. Great. Yes. Okay. So um, I am Michael Gray, a select board member, and Brian Chatney. Um, I'm also Rudy. And um, you guys are next on the agenda because I know that you have to be somewhere else. Callis at Seven Monk, East Monk, okay. at Eight. Okay. I think yeah. there's plenty of time. Plenty of time. Plenty of time. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. I can give you an overview, and I think you've mm -hmm. I have this. already received this. It yeah. basically tells you everything. Um, yeah. We have received a grant uh, through VTrans um, to provide service starting in Morrisville to downtown Gary. Um, it's it's starting off as a commuter type of service, um, focusing on. Um, those that would primarily use bus or public transportation to get to their places of employment in the morning and then return in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. um, this is a little odd because Morrisville and Barry are both GMT territory. Mm -hmm. um, RCT covers the Northeast Kingdom, so Caledonia, Orleans, Essex County. We also <coughs> handle demand response and non-emergency medical transportation such as Medicaid in Memorial County. Um, so, but we have buses stationed in Morrisville, and originally this plan was for us to start the service in Hardwick and go down to um, Barry. Uh, that only made sense because the bus was going to be starting and originating in Morrisville to start the actual route, otherwise it was going to be empty going from 
more spill to hardware. So GMT has graciously allowed us to just run with it. Um, like I said, we, we handle public transportation in the Northeast Kingdom. Um, our largest commuter route is the US-2 commuter, which goes from St. Johnsbury to uh, Montpelier. Mm -hmm. uh, the idea behind this route is that um, the US-2 commuter and this Morrisville Barry will intersect at the Washington Electric Co-op mm -hmm. uh, parking lot <coughs> in East Montpelier. So if you are on the US-2 commuter coming from St. Johnsbury and any of the towns in between Marshfield and Plainfield. Um, you would be able to get off of our bus, get onto the other one of our buses, and go to downtown Barry, uh, which is now where VTrans has moved their employees. Um, if you are on the bus coming from Morrisville and you'd like to go to Montpelier, you can get off one bus and get on the other bus and go to Montpelier. Um, you can also access the link to Waterbury and Burlington. Uh, in Montpelier as well, so our transfers times hit those um, those as well. Um, RCT is all fare free, so anytime you step on an RCT bus, uh, it doesn't cost you anything. Um, it costs you through your taxpayer dollars, but it doesn't cost you anything additionally for um, fares. Mm -hmm. And that's the same thing that's going to happen in uh, Morrisville. So we won't have any fares there. Mm -hmm. um, the idea is to start this within a couple weeks. It would be October 7th is the, is the target date. It has been pushed back a little bit, but um, October 7th is uh, the plan. Mm -hmm. um, and you know, that's about it. We've got, I've got a list of, of confirmed and potential stops. We are. Um, we wear a lot of hats at RCT, and our operations manager and I have been working through the list of stops from Morrisville to Barry. Um, and so, if you see anything here that you think would be uh, that wouldn't work, I would appreciate that feedback. If you see something that you think would work, I'd also appreciate that feedback. Um, and as I as I mentioned, we don't charge any fares. Uh, we do go to the towns that we. Um, work with or um, serve uh, and ask for some sort of a donation or appropriation. Um, and the main reason is because when we receive a grant from the state, it's typically going to be an 80-20, so 80% federal, 20% local match. Um, in this case, the grant is going to pay for the operations portion of it, but we are having to provide a new bus. Uh, that will be arriving in December or January just specifically for this group. A uh, new bus typically costs $120,000 and we're, we're ponying up with 10% of that, so that's coming out of RCT's pocket. Mm -hmm. for that. So if, if the town were gracious enough to donate any kind of money or offer any kind of appropriation for that, we'd be obviously grateful. Do you have a, 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 a figure in mind? $12,000. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Being 10%. Okay. Well, we give GMP like five hundred dollars. Right. You know, I was thinking five hundred dollars. If that okay. was something you would consider. Mm -hmm. And obviously, like I said, we would definitely work with you on, on any of the stops that you feel would be appropriate. Mm -hmm. um, this isn't an area that we typically serve because it's right. GMT's territory, but we're more than willing to work with you. Uh, I feel it's a good opportunity for your residents to be able to get to uh, Barry and Montpelier and beyond, at least most of the way, fare free. Mm -hmm. Now, do you guys stop at people's houses or will there be designated so places? There will be designated stops, and you can always flag down the bus if it's safe to pull over. We can obviously pull over. Mm -hmm. um, with our with our circulator service through St. John's Barry, Lindenville, Newport, uh, and our demand response, we would either go to your house or deviate off of the routes by three quarters of a mile or give us a heads up. Um, on a commuter route, we typically wouldn't deviate too far, but you can always flag us down. And if there is a stop or or we find that there are um, multiple people who would like to utilize, you know, say, the rec field, I'm, I'm not just making that up, yeah. um, and that's where they would like to park, um, we can obviously deviate off that. The idea is to get as many people on the bus as possible. Mm -hmm. um, it's not necessarily to make it as easy as possible for the driver. We try to balance that. And obviously, we want to keep people safe. Um, we don't want anybody walking out into the road. We want to be able to pull off as far as possible. Uh, all the buses are equipped with wheelchair lifts. Uh, so 
we do sometimes need to be able to pull off far enough to operate those lifts as well. So mm -hmm. those are the kind of things we try to keep in mind, especially in the winter snow banks. We don't want to drop anybody off to in the middle of a snow bank and then. So when they meet in East Montpelier, both buses will be there, so people won't just get off of one bus and stand there until the next one shows up. Yeah, this actually the yeah. whole schedule is built around that transfer point. Being, being right on. You know, meeting, yes, meeting from there. and that, So yeah. it started from there and working backwards in both directions. Well, some one bus is late, you're not just going to leave people there. The other bus will wait for it. No, we would be able to wait. Yeah, yeah to get there. be able okay. to communicate that. And then that original US2 commuter route uh, was also based around the GMT links. So meeting them in downtown Montpelier or at the DAL parking lot. Right? So that if you need to get to Waterbury or Burlington or beyond, you can get off of our bus and get onto the link. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So the stop at Woodbury is pretty much right out here in Rank Park. So Maine. that's what that, that's a um, that's one that we were, were thinking would be a, a good location. Mm -hmm. um, obviously, we need to speak with the church and get and finalize that. Um, you know, and some some folks would not, or some locations may not want people parking in their location. Obviously, right. we need to take a liability for those parking there. Um, but if you feel that's not a good spot or it is a good spot, well, people do use it. Sort of as a park and ride. Okay. And you know, we would be glad to check in. It's probably Darwin Thompson. Or, or, uh, Darwin. No, the other Jeff. 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 Yeah, Jeff Thompson. Yeah. I would check with. Um, uh, yeah, I would appreciate any, any sure. type of assistance. Yeah, we only really have two places for people to near yeah. the village. Yeah. 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 There probably okay. wouldn't be more than three, four at the most, and that's never been a problem. Yeah. So right. People who park here now. Do okay. you have ridership projections from each community based on population? Um, based on GMTs, not okay. their projections. <coughs> um, we haven't done the projections ourselves because this was originally this was set up so that uh, we were going to be sharing the route the GMT, and then it only kind of happened within the last couple of weeks that kind of went towards one. So the, the challenge is is that we are fare free, GMT is not fare free. We've got two different color buses, we've got two different logos, we've got mm -hmm. two different systems that are operating. That's what we do on the US2 commuter. Mm -hmm. um, it took some time to work itself out. Mm -hmm. uh, now people understand that. The feeling from D-Trans, and I understand this, is that if you start a new service, it would be kind of odd that you're going to have, mm -hmm. you know, which bus do I get on? What time am I supposed to be getting on this bus? And you've got two different colored buses and, and logos going in different directions. So yeah. the thought was, let's give it to one provider. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. yeah. I got one good bear I can think of, Dan Jarnas's girlfriend. Mm -hmm. She doesn't drive, and uh -huh. she... I think Dan's been driving her. She at one time she was working at Tim's Convenience over in Plainfield. Mm -hmm. So, but she wouldn't have a way to get here if she. You right. know, so I didn't mm -hmm. know if Woodbury Village, if somebody was there, they would still stop for one person or not. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and absolutely. Like absolutely. I said, the idea is to get people on the bus. Yeah. Because so, mm -hmm. you know, she could wait people post off in the morning or something, and, and yeah. Yeah. she had a schedule. So that's good. Yeah. I'll let them know that. Yeah, they know yeah, great. Be excited yeah. about it. Yeah. <laughs> Do you have suggestions for how we reach out to people in general or people in particular to try and increase ridership? Um, well, if we knew of. Um, we have a couple of websites uh, that we work. could advertise on Woodbury Connections and Front Porch. Yeah, front actually, Woodbury Connections doesn't exist anymore. Yeah, that doesn't exist anymore. But well, we have, yeah. Front Porch Forum is kind of yeah. one yeah. of our better ways of communicating. Yeah. in Woodbury, and we do have a website. Um, we have the local, our local um, public uh, journalists here. Um, <laughs> Thank you. So, um, and then I don't know if, if you, are there any other groups where if there were people that, you know, we might be in knowledge of that could benefit from something like this? I mean, you just mentioned mm -hmm. one person. One person. Um, so we could just try to kind of brainstorm that on our own. Yeah, we start mm -hmm. advertising on some of the websites yeah. around here, and maybe we can mm -hmm. generate and, some uh, people. We could do uh, public service announcements in the Hardwick Gazette. Because mm -hmm. yeah. it's pretty expensive for somebody to drive themselves mm -hmm. to and back every day. So. Mm -hmm. Might be a nice option for people. We could bring some materials here. Right. Okay. Yeah, that would be helpful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. One question I have is, you know, um, 
the return trip, you're going to bring people down there, kind of commuter time, and then the bus will drive back. I can't imagine a lot of people going from Barrie to Morrisville in the morning to go to work. Probably not. So, you know, I'm just wondering if, um, and, you know, with a return trip, if, say, somebody wanted to ride down to Barrie Montpelier and um, do some errands, you know, two or three hours worth of time, and then catch a ride back if the, if the <coughs> bus were to wait like three hours or four hours to make a return trip, that, that might mm. might connect with more people wanting to get back mm. after riding down, rather, especially if they weren't working. Um, yeah, I guess is it, it designed as a commuter route? It, it, it is, is a commuter route. Yeah. Yeah. It's not mm -hmm. like a fixed yeah. route. Yeah. Um, I think what we probably have to do in that case is evaluate uh, ridership in both directions in the a mm -hmm. and the mm -hmm. and then the fleet has on some additional mm -hmm. routes. Um, because Financially, if we were to keep the bus in Barry for three hours, and we're looking between sixty and seventy dollars an hour for the yeah. bus to just sit there, yeah. the driver wages and the operating and, and mm -hmm. um, where to put it, and so you're, you're really um, and, and, and also the other challenge is that it's it's not our you know we don't have the Medicaid contract or the other mm -hmm. type of non-emergency medical transportation contracts for Barry, right. so we really can't do anything there other than kind of sit around and mm -hmm. twiddle our thumbs for three hours. But okay. I completely hear what you're saying. I think what we have to do is add on an additional route once we have some mm -hmm. some figures. Yeah. And VTrans will provide more money if we can show them these are the amount of riders that we've gotten, we've got projections mm -hmm. moving forward, and the idea is to get, like I said, more people to get mm -hmm. out of their cars, get onto the bus. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But yes. you, you are right, though. It's probably going to be pretty thin coming back. Right, to my guess, yeah. And then maybe thin going back down exactly. in the yeah. afternoon, too. Yeah. The bulk of them are probably going to be coming from Morrisville, Hardwick, mm -hmm. and then through the square to there. Mm -hmm. When I think about the, you leave downtown Barry and you head to Hardwick, mm -hmm. um, is there any commuting potential there for start times in Hardwick? Do we know of employers or job access flow going from? So again, from it was basically everything, um, everything is based on that leaving time at the wet line. Um, so adjusting it off of this, um, <coughs> It really be transit it has to we have to meet that bus there at that time so the, the original proposal the had RCT servicing this yeah. way while well, GMT exactly. service that yeah, way. so you had double and the, it sounds like we're down to one yes yeah. <coughs> so there was a, so in between that when we when it was decided that just RCT would handle the transportation um, the afternoon we were actually the suggestion was from VTrans was we actually mimic the way it would be if GMT was going to be doing it as well. But we would actually have an empty bus, or theoretically an empty bus, going back and forth between Morrisville. So in the afternoon we'd go from Morrisville to Barrie, then back to Morrisville, then back to Barrie, then back to And so that that was going to be you know, forty thousand dollars more to have a, pretty much an empty bus going back and forth. Then the other question you had before is, what was the performance measure that Brian asked before you got here? What's the performance measure? How many people do we need to see from start to end? So that's a good question. Um, there are different categories, uh, and I would need to, that the state uses to measure uh, based upon urban. Obviously, this is not urban. Small town commuter, rural commuter. I would need to uh, check with VTrans to see what this particular type of um, commuter route would fit into which category, and then from there I can tell you how many passengers per hour or how many revenue miles, meaning miles that the door is open to passengers coming on board, mm -hmm. uh, what the acceptable, unacceptable, um, whatever that, the next one. Oh, or whatever the next or the greatest level is. Um, but I can get that. I'll speak to Tim Bradshaw and find that out and I can let you know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you.
production, you know, what, what performance levels will take. And in the first year, it's going to be, you know, that's more like getting the word out and, um, and doing the marketing and really trying to get people excited about it. So it should have a, it should have an upgrade. Um, and, and this is a three-year project? It is, it's funded for three years, three years and that's yeah. typical for this type of mm -hmm. uh, funding source. Yeah. Um, the funding source is known as CMAC, which is Congestion Mitigation and Air Quality. It's a federal grant. Mm -hmm. um, they're typically for three years. They're designed to in you know, rural areas to promote public transportation, get people out of their cars. Um, and the thing with the, the what has to happen is feature, we have to show that it's working enough so that <coughs> trans will then be able to come up with the funds to roll it over into, mm -hmm. into the regular federal 5311 funds. Once that happens, then VTrans is on the hook for putting some of the state money into it, mm -hmm. and we're on the hook for putting our own local match money into it mm -hmm. as well, mm -hmm. um, beyond just purchasing a new bus. This is operating funds which pay for the driver and the gas and the, that goes in the bus. That's a 50-50 split. So when when it gets converted to that, just those portions of it, RCT will pay 50% of that cost, so 50% of the driver's wages and benefits, 50% of the dispatcher's benefits and wages, 50% of the fuel. And then the administrative portion of that, so my salary, um, the lights for, for uh, RCT's offices, that is, um, we'll have to pay 10% of that. Mm -hmm. So there is some, some hefty expense that will come mm -hmm. along with it if this, you know, ideas for it to be successful, mm -hmm. but we will get punished for our success. Now yeah. you, say, <laughs> you say you're going to Barry. what about Montpelier? Is there uh, another route from Barry to Montpelier? So, so, I guess so there's a couple things. Montpelier, the US 2 commuter, continues to Montpelier. So if you want to just go to Montpelier, you can get off this bus and get on the US 2 commuter. Oh, there's another one there, okay. Yeah, so, or what you could do is you could utilize the, uh, is it the city shuttle, the GMT right, shuttle that goes back and forth between yeah, because I figured there's probably as many people going into Montpelier in the morning as there is Barry, if yeah. not more. Yeah, yeah. They, yeah. Would, they would transfer a bus in, in East Montpelier. Um, yep, you just you should get off this bus, you get on the, get on the bus commuter there. bus, and you're taken to uh, downtown. You're taken to downtown Montpelier, you're taken to College Green, downtown Montpelier, the DOL lot, National Life. <coughs> yeah, so this is a little downtown. deceiving, Barry, because it does, it gets you Barry yes, and Montpelier. Yes, it gets you Barry, mm -hmm. yes, yeah, you would have to transfer that. Yeah. yeah. And then you have your choice. You can really not to not to dissuade anyone from using GMT, but if you just get on the RCT bus, it's still fare free to get to downtown Montpelier. So that might be something when we're doing like public information about this, we might want to mention that though you know this this group suggests it just goes to Barry. There's right. also. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So that, we, that would be a good thing to. What we can yeah. do that this isn't in the regular bus schedule yet. Mm -hmm. Right. It's still being worked out, but the US two commuter portion is in here and gives you the GMT portion of the route and the RCT portion of the route and where where we stop along the way in Montpelier and there's multiple yeah. places in Montpelier. That we stop. Yeah. They could talk about you link at the East Montpelier park and ride. <laughs> So if you work in National class. Life and you live in Woodbury, you can now get to work in downtown. <coughs> yeah. yeah. or, or any of the state offices downtown. Um, you know, V-Trans moved from National Life to downtown Barry, which is going to be in this sort of thing. Yeah. Um, we've got the Department of Education still, the Department of Libraries, there's a lot of state um, state departments, and then anything in downtown Montpelier or the college that you could utilize this for. Okay. Mm -hmm. Nick, when people think about public transit and buses, what should they picture when it comes to size of bus on this route? Um, so the size of the bus on this route, um, so, so our US-2 commuter is, is a heavy-duty city bus, so that's what the, the mm -hmm. US-2 commuter is. The size bus for this route is going to be more of what considered mm -hmm. a cutaway, so it'll be a pickup truck or a van front, <coughs> um, kind of like a smaller Winnebago type of vehicle. So you'll have a pickup or a van front, and then um, the bus portion in the back of it. Mm -hmm. um, the bus, the brand new bus that will take over this route in December or January when it comes in, is I believe um, about 30 feet long and, and will hold 22 to 24 passengers um, if there's no wheelchair. Mm -hmm. Options being utilized. Mm -hmm. Our largest bus 
a city type bus uh, is uh, 35 passengers. And that's the US2 commuter. Mm -hmm. And that's frequently full. <coughs> wow. Well, anybody that rides down to Barry can expect to leave Barry to come back here by bus at 5, 10 p.m. So you're down there for the day. Yeah, yes, you're down there for the day. Yeah. Uh, yep, and you, you finish finish work on uh, the state 4.30 to 4.45. Yeah. Um, so if, you're, if you're in uh, Barry City Place, it's only a walk and a half walk just past the courthouse. Mm -hmm. You can go right across the street, mm -hmm. um, pick up the bus there, and then you're on your way back. Yeah. And then it's a short ride. If you if you live in um, St. Johnsbury, say, uh, you have a short ride back to the Red Lot, and you switch on that route. And if you're in Montpelier, you're going to meet at the exact same time at the Red Lot. Get on this bus. Like no. oh, okay. I'll be right back. So if somebody was was not commuting to work but just wanted to go down for the day, they could also catch a link to go up to the mall or to the hospital mm -hmm. or. Yeah. Or yeah. Airport, yeah. Think yeah. of a, a day of it in very much. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's my, my only thought. People aren't just going to go down there to do a little grocery shopping and not. stay it's there really all day. Yeah, this, yeah. 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 this is mostly for working. Yeah. Yeah. At this point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Hopefully, it'll be utilized enough that we can add on another, another midday route bit. or something. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. But I understand that that's pretty tough to do without. Well, you got to start somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So I wonder if, if um, two stops in Woodbury would be better than one, like one in the village and then one here. Yeah. Would that okay. be possible? Yeah. Anything's possible. I you know. Um, yeah. Can we do? They have the two centers. Right. Nice. We got two dirt roads, kind of. We don't really have here. a parking place in this Woodbury we center. No. So we can. We don't. Or we might. We yeah. have to stop somewhere where there's a yeah. park and ride necessarily, and we can pull over in front of the store. You know, people yeah. are dropped off there yeah. or mm -hmm. something like that. Um, do you have an idea of where you're thinking in the village? Right in, right in the center, where the mm -hmm. church is and the mm -hmm. town hall. Yeah. And okay. There's no, the but there's no place store. to park. Well, we could. You <laughs> know, once we get our our other project done, there might be. There are a couple right spots there. with the park and there and the, 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 the park. town highway department could. Keep those open in the winter if, um, if um, we request it. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, we have that. And then this fun. this is open. I know the town plows the pretty. They don't plow the church loop there, but they do pretty much plow the whole parking area here. Yeah, they're so. pretty early. Yeah, I mean they know we can. Yeah, no, they're it's usually better. done by long before the bus would get there. Yeah, so I think it would be beneficial, especially I know that if Dan's girlfriend. What's involved should be right there. We don't want the hill down in the village. So, yeah. and, uh, I mean, maybe that would be something to try at first. And if it doesn't yeah. seem like anybody's taking advantage of yeah. the village, um, we could always turn it into a request stop, which means okay. we're not necessarily going to stop there unless you call ahead and let us know. But you could call ahead and say, Hey, I'm going to be there every day for the next month in this mm -hmm. stop, or I'm going to fly this down. Yeah. Uh, but we could certainly, yeah. certainly add that and then. Um, Nobody ever gets on there for a month or two months. Right, right. Months, then why, yeah. why stop? Why yeah. stop? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, unless there's somebody standing there waving a flag at you or something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And we're going right by. So yeah. It's not going to get more than a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, hopefully. Yeah, it's something yeah, everybody it's, thinks about. It'd be nice to see people take advantage of it. Yeah. And it's nice that it's being offered to. Just to see. Just to see, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah we have got um, a few seniors in town. This is an aging town, I think. Mm -hmm. but, so it might be a nice thing mm -hmm. to do. Mm -hmm. So as far as um, like a, a donation or a contribution, um, is there a timeline that would be helpful for you to for each town to, to contribute that? Um. So what usually happens is um, we usually are put on the ballot for town meeting, and then mm -hmm. uh, I think most of the money usually starts filtering in you know, like, you know, October, November, December, or something like that mm -hmm. from, from the year prior. 
really, I'll take money anytime you want to get it. So. Okay, well, that's what I was wondering. I mean, because <laughs> Green, we do have a. Yeah, I'm, I'm not. Uh, we can invoice you. That's, that's helpful. Yeah. Having an invoice do, would be helpful just for the accounting yeah. and all. Oh. Actually, we do invoice the town. So right. it's really, you know, it's not if you're. We invoice you in January, say, after town or March, after town. <coughs> it's not like you're getting a collection right. yeah. for it. But it sounds like this will start up, though, in, in a few weeks, actually. Yes. Well, um, I think what we'll do is. Uh, We'll have this on the agenda for our next meeting, yeah. um, and uh, we probably shouldn't make a decision. We just lost one of our selectmen. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, I appreciate you just but, hearing me out. So. And, yeah, um, thank you. Yeah, yeah, I like it. I think it's yeah, so. long past due. I know of a lot of people. I work in the village, and there's a lot of people that mm -hmm. struggle to get into the town. Mm -hmm. and hopefully, they'll take advantage of it now that it's out there. So. Mm -hmm. Well, you want them to do a. Um, Petition, or would you want to just put that yeah, in your for budget town meeting, you decide um, to? Because for CVTA, we make them do a petition, or at least they did a petition in your phone. Originally, yeah. So yeah. we would, what what we might do is at the next select board meeting, we'll discuss this and maybe make a contribution um, now or soon this year, this fiscal year, um, and then we would have it on our town meeting. Um, Agenda, um, you know, the appropriation listing, um, which you would need to su submit um, a request for. Um, be a one time request, you wouldn't have to do it every year. No, it would just. It's, it's yeah, a petition for like 35 signatures yeah. one year. Or the alternative is you could just put it in your budget. You don't have to consider them as a non profit charitable organization, but it's a big right. yeah. <laughs> They are a little So bigger. you would want. A petition or just a, or just a letter from the request to But it, we'll figure that out. Okay. Let you know. Okay. okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We were used to yeah, this is a good thing. So. It's I don't yeah. want to make him jump through hoops myself either. No. And, no. So this is a this <laughs> we talk a bit a lot, positive. We talk a lot in the GMT about the if you're requesting five hundred dollars, what does it cost them to get a petition? Mm. Is your money being right. used to provide the service, or is your right. citizens' money being used to ah, send to people out, out to yeah. fill out a well, petition? The petition, you know, what has happened for some groups in the past is that they uh, well, they write it, yeah. and then the town works to get the signatures. Um, and that's what I would imagine will happen in, in this case. Okay. We do now have um, a town meeting appropriations policy, which kind of requires that any new group um, go through the petition process. Mm -hmm. um, so we should probably follow that, but we can... <laughs> See, now we made it if, up. <laughs> if, you, if you wrote it, if you wrote the petition, we would do the groundwork to get this. Okay. Um, so, which we can we talk to all the other towns in the Northeast Kingdom to do the same thing? Yeah. 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 Are we the first on the list of towns you're working with, or where? Yeah, yeah for, the, for, this, community, mm -hmm. for this group. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, I like it. I don't think we'd have any problem getting signatures. <coughs> no. Okay. So, Great. Thank you. I appreciate that very much. Yeah. yeah, so I guess if you could get a petition together just asking for the yeah. appropriation. Yeah. For this would be for our next fiscal year. So um, twenty one. Twenty one, yeah. And and we will discuss making a contribution um, as a select board um, for this fiscal okay. year. Okay. Great. Thank you. So is this say again when you're starting this? Um, it's scheduled to start on October seventh, so we're <coughs> really cramming right now to yeah. right. Do you have a contact, like a card or anything? Um, or I don't have a card. Yeah. Tagline is communities are middle name. Yes. 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 
Yeah, it's but like the ruby's out the window. <laughs> <laughs> no one knew what the ruby in the kingdom was anyway. Norma, I didn't see you sitting in there. You snuck in. Anything you'd like to ask him or? Well, no, I, I just saw that that energy piece was on the agenda as well. Okay. It was about, so I thought okay. I'd find out. Yeah. That's all right. Okay. That's next on the list. <laughs> so I think we're more Heather. questions. Um, okay, thank you very much. Thank um, you. Appreciate it. And thanks for um, getting this started. And I hope it I hope it's successful. Yeah, yeah I do too. too. Enough yeah. people have talked about it. Hopefully they'll take advantage of it now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So Norman, you're up Thanks. next. <laughs> uh, I'm, I'm, I'm here about I guess um, as a member of the planning commission, um, I will. It is past six thirty, so. Um, yeah, I sort of assumed that he would come, but um, he's not here yet. Um, and but I know what this is about, and I am a member of the planning commission. Um, he's now the chair. Okay. Um, so. But, um, so we were approached, um, the town, the approached for the town planning commission originally, um, was approached by Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission. They are doing um, energy plans for a group of towns through some kind of block grant. I don't know much about the background detail of it. But one of the towns has dropped out. So they're working on this and they had an opening for another town. So we were approached about it. Um, and both Skip and I thought it was a good idea. We did talk about the Planning Commission, because um, at this point, um, having an energy component in your town plan, um, most towns are working on that. Um, and there's two different reasons for that, but, um, and I'll just get into that in a minute. But So this basically would not cost the town a cent. Okay. And the Central Mount Regional Planning Commission would work to put together the energy plan based on the regional plan um, and then the Planning Commission would work with the uh, re Regional Planning Commission to um, kind of form it to would very we probably do some um, you know a public hearing I think about Question it. Question for you? Sure. What's an energy plan? Okay so the energy plan basically the main reason the towns are putting together energy plans is um, so that the town has some input, and this is pretty much all for renewable energy. Um, and so the town has some input on where there might be places in town to site something, um, and also places in town where the town would not want something to be sited, so that if somebody, a developer, goes before the Public Service Board and has a, a proposal for a series of windmills along the the Woodbury, Worcester, Elmore Ridge um, on the western part of town. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the town would have had already had a kind of a say in what they. It, it might help, it might not. Um, so that, that's the basic reason. My understanding of an energy plan is to to um, have public input on where places for some type of renewable energy might be cited, and also places where. Um, uh, Things would not want, we would not want to have this site. Okay. And I know in the regional, the regional um, planning commission has put together a regional energy plan, and um, there's a good part of Woodbury um, that is for different. There are different criteria for not citing something, um, and most of Woodbury is fits some or two or three or more criteria for not citing something. So. Um, you know, just based on the regional plan. Um, but the state is also asking each town to take on a responsibility for this kind of 2050, you know, everybody um, having, you know, renewable energy, that each town um, take on some responsibility for um, the siting of, of um, renewable energy. So would this have some impact on people wanting to put solar on their houses or to put up a windmill in their backyard? Is that what this is about? Um, Saying yay and nay to them about well, that? Well, that, um, no, that, I don't think it would so much cover individuals like, um, 
it would be more uh, municipal. Municipal, place. you know, if, if the town would have wanted to site a place, or okay. if there was a developer that want to, we might want to approach the town, or I suppose a property owner. Um, you know, it would be more large scale, um, and you know, large scale is pretty from pretty small, okay. large scale to yeah. to huge. Um, I think it would cover more of that. Um, the restriction, my understanding of the restriction now for somebody doing their own home solar panels or a wind generator is more um, having to deal with the utility that would, if it was a net metering system, is um, you know, whether the, the local um, utility, um, which is mostly hydroelectric and a little bit of Washington electric, um, you know, they have limits on how much they um, yeah. can accept. Um, <coughs> Which is usually set by the legislature each year. Um, so, uh, so that tends to be the, the factor there. So if you're going to do your own, you've got to go off grid because you can't sell the power back um, to Yeah, them. you know, going off grid, I don't, there really isn't any issue. Um, I know that right now there isn't anything in the town zoning ordinance about that. Um, and in the regional plan, I don't think it really, I don't think it really covers. Individuals um, off, off to, uh, but I you know I don't know for sure I haven't read the whole of the mm -hmm. regional energy plan. Um, um, so the the planning commission was asking the select board for approval to accept having this <coughs> you know becoming part of this um, group grant um, to have the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission work. Up, uh, an energy plan for the town. Um, this would dovetail with the work that they will be doing for the town and creating a town plan for us. Yep. Um, this will become a, a component of that. Um, uh -huh. And that part we are paying a, a small match for, but uh, this part would be basically already paid for. Yep. So, um, you know, I could try to find more information about this. Um, um, we thought that would this be helpful. Or sound like a good idea. Anything? Yeah. Of course, this is the first I'm hearing about this yeah. specifically. I'd be one. I'd be interested in um, the town that dropped out and why they did. Mm -hmm. yeah. How come? Yeah. Uh, so, you okay. know. Um, right. I don't know the answer to it. Which, yeah, which, which town dropped out and why? Okay. Yeah. yeah. I mean, that's information I'd want to know because maybe okay. there's a good reason not to do this. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a little concerned about what you mentioned in terms of uh, the regional plan has Woodbury as mostly not being a place where you can do things as opposed mm -hmm. to where you can mm -hmm. and what criteria are involved in that, how come that is, because then if they put that together we can expect the plan that they're going to generate would be similar. It would be similar. Probably, and, yeah. um, uh, so, and, it's all in the details, you know. right? And I could, I could, I have, I think I have a copy digitally of the regional um, energy plan, yeah. um, which I could send to you. Sure, I'll take a look. But sure, yeah, yeah. I mean, they, um, and I, I'd like to see. So there was some kind of grant involved for them to do this work. Mm -hmm. I would like to see what was in in the grant, what the scope of work is, and what are they going to do to come up with this, um, to see if it's, uh, um, you know. A reasonable approach um, mm -hmm. that allows people to pretty much do the things they want to do in this right. regard without undue restriction, um, mm -hmm. and which I think is in general the very approach to things. You know, if, uh, unless there's a serious reason to prevent it, <coughs> people should be allowed to do stuff. Mm -hmm. I think that's in general the approach that town's taken on most yep. things. Um, mm -hmm. So we'd want that to follow suit. So anyway, those are question marks, I, and the answers may be just fine. I, I just don't know. Uh, yeah, but those are the questions that come to mind. Okay. I can. Um, I will contact the person um, that's overseeing this and um, give these list of questions to her. I can send you the regional energy plan. I'm pretty sure I have it on my computer. Yeah, of course. It might be on their website too. I guess. Right. And it is on their website. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, and then just ask these. Um, you know, three questions that you brought up, which town dropped out and why, um, you know, what is the grant source, um, 
is a federal, I think it's a federal grant, um, and the scope of work, um, and then um, just types of individual property owner restrictions that might be part of the regional plan. Is that what you're thinking of? And how that would affect uh, res town residents? Yeah, I'll just, well, it's just a question mark. I don't know what it says. Right, yet, so okay, it, you know, and I don't know what it says. Either. Well, I'm just keying off of what you said that it was pretty restrictive in terms of not allowing them. Well, it was, it was more, um, the, the, you know, the regional plan was kind of based on, um, I think it was state criteria, um, you know, like the fact that a large part of Woodbury is forested was one of the reasons. Um, and, um, and, you know, and then wetland areas, you know, that's another. Yeah, yeah. So that, that type of <laughs> was, it was yeah. mostly all related to topography. That's, Particular yeah. to the bird. Yeah, in my, in my memory. Yeah, like, like I said, it may all make perfect sense. So I just mm -hmm. don't know if that's yeah. yeah. But I, like I said, I'd be curious as to how someone would think mm -hmm. that it makes sense. Yeah. yeah. And there, they do conveniently have a map um, showing the you know, color coded different areas and yeah. other. Um, yeah, there's altitudes, forested areas, yeah. there's wetlands, there's a lot of things that, as we know, are not very developable. Yeah, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. And there will, you know, there, in, I assume that in this, that there will also be, um, as in any part of the town plan, there will be time for, you know, public hearings and town input. And yeah, but each step will work, becomes a little more difficult to deal with. So right. it's good to, <laughs> yeah. it's good to um, make sure it's done right from the get-go and yeah. try to fix things down mm -hmm. the road, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. I think, mm -hmm. usually. Yeah, yeah, usually, yeah. Like it works. <laughs> you know, another question I'll ask is, um, you know, obviously we're at, we'll, we'll be ha having the Central Vermont Regional Planning Commission put this together, but then do we, you know, there is an approval process through the whole town plan. I, I assume that this would be a part of the town plan and go through all of those steps for I think that's process. required now, isn't it? About the energy plan is not required. It's highly uh, okay. recommended. Um, okay. But, um, and I would imagine very soon that it will be required. Yeah, I mean, a lot of developers, you know, um, would rather understand the rules of the game. Right. You know, if, if they're you know, looking to do some solo or wind or whatever, mm -hmm. uh, they're going to do it, and they, you know, having the town having thought of things through a little mm -hmm. bit and and they know, you know, what's acceptable and what isn't, rather than going through right. a more difficult process. You know, works best for everybody. So right. it's possible, it's all perfect, and it's great, mm -hmm. but we just want to do due diligence and yeah. check into it. That's that all. Sounds, that sounds good. You know, and of course, the other, the other side of the, the reason that it is so strongly recommended is that if a town doesn't have an energy plan, and there is a developer that would like to try to do something, and um, there's, you know, um, the developer has a little bit easier way um, with the public service board to have something like that happen if um, whether the town objected or not. And I think the, the Public Utilities Commission they came from the board now that, uh, mm -hmm. would give deference to, you know, they would certainly pay attention if the town had something in writing about it. Right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, it's good. You know, it would make, it, mm -hmm. make sense to all around like that. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I will, um, I know the person to contact uh, who's overseeing this, and I'll, I'll send her those questions, um, and I will CC you on it. Um, and we could wait to make a decision on this. I don't think there's, um, I can check and see, I don't think there's a, a, an emergency to okay. get an uh, answer on it. Get an answer on it but, um, Paul might still be back tonight. Right. Yeah. Um, or, you know, we could give the go-ahead and just um, try to get answers to these questions and, and then have them be concerned. So, um, but can't hurt. Why don't we ask the questions and we'll, we'll have this on the schedule for the next meeting. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Norman. Thank you, Norman. Thank you. <laughs> Okay, so um, I guess we're ready for the town treasurer. Randy, we're all set for the town 
pressure. two weeks. Um, totaling $210,386.69. Mm -hmm. um, property tax, dog license money, land records recording, land records copies, vault fees, zoning permits, um, copies at cost, and then the transfer, we transfer over to um, records restoration. Mm -hmm. The percentage, the $4 of each. Uh, delinquencies, we took in um, $3,524.57, mm -hmm. now giving us a grand total of $41,393.30. Total of, that's what we've collected, or that's still that's what's outstanding? That's what's outstanding. Yeah, yeah. yeah. 41 grand. Yeah. Um, so over the last two weeks, I have transferred two hundred thirty-eight thousand over to the money market mm -hmm. from the checking. Mm -hmm. The That's <laughs> our nest egg for the year. Yeah. Um. So you saw our first payment for the low pro. Mm -hmm. was cut for um, October 1st. Yeah. Um, so to finish off September, I will have the library payroll, another 941 to do, or a federal tax deposit, mm -hmm. uh, the VMERS to finish off the month. Um, so yeah, I'll be cutting those next mm -hmm. week. Mm -hmm. Other than that, uh, Tom will be coming in to do the quarterlies in October. Um, bank recs. And yeah, the money is flowing in good. Good. Which we're not into the penalty phase yet for taxes, property taxes, are we? No, not yet. Not yet. So that's come in really well, though, property taxes. Pre, well, I say prepaid fees. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, when is the deadline? Is October 24. 24. Yeah. yeah. That's a few more weeks. Did you? I put little post its on a few I things. I saw those. Uh, yep. Um, so, Hardwick Electric, mm -hmm. I'll get in touch with. Okay. And then you had wrote uh, as far as. The underground. And yeah. I don't know if it's going to be a portion or since it's not completed. What yet. I'll do is so. there's a person that I've been communicating with about the underground storage mm -hmm. tank, um, and I will ask him. You know, knowing that we are moving that tank, you know, within this fiscal year, fiscal year, right. and hopefully within a month or so, um, whether we need to pay that fee for. I mean, it's a small amount to be right. with. Right. But if we can, but yeah, we don't pay it, and I can void the check and. Yeah. So hang on to that just a little bit. I'll call him tomorrow. We'll have some yeah. time in the afternoon. So Did we have a date that that tank may come out yet? Or? Well, we're going to talk about that. Okay. Um, yeah, we're getting closer to knowing um, what to do. Um, it'll pretty much depend on when the above ground tank can be delivered, and I haven't got an answer for, to that yet. Okay. But get so there. that'll get delivered first, filled, and then we'll. Yeah, yeah, I'm not quite sure how we'll, because um, the um, ideally it would be nice to put the above ground tank where the oh. 
underground tank is. Mm -hmm. So um, whether maybe if, you know, so we'll schedule the removal of the tank um, based on when the above ground tank can be installed. Um, they might be able to bring you like what they call a skid tank, which is like a pipe yeah, we might be a, tank. Yeah, we might temporary. be able to work something like that out. Um, or they could buy diesel fuel. From so the our new tank, is that going to be setting on a concrete yes. slab? Yep. So the, the old tanks have come out mm -hmm. and we got to pour a concrete slab. Yep. Okay, so yep. it's not so it's a, a process. Yeah. yeah, it's a process. Yeah. Yeah. And I just, um, uh, Discovered there's like a 25 page uh, <laughs> above ground storage tank rules, um, which I haven't read yet. I did print one out. Um, so, uh, but I, yeah, I mean, we can, we could talk about that now. Um, I have contacted uh, three um, contractors who would oversee the removal of the underground storage tank and the, I'll call it the decommissioning of the tank, uh, cleaning it and um, and then um, I've also contacted um, <coughs> two companies that would um, that we could hire to put in the uh, above ground storage tank if we choose to not have Gillespie's put put it in. Um, the auditors are having a little bit of a connection over making a five year commitment to Gillespie's. Um, so I thought what I would do is do due diligence to get estimates from contractors who could install a tank at all at town expense um, and then we would have control over the yearly bidding for the diesel fuel um, yeah. which is what they're worried about. Um, there is a zero interest loan that we can get from the state for both the removal of the underground storage tank and the placement installation of and purchase of an above ground storage tank. So depending on what the cost would be um, I know I've been told that a new double wall above ground storage tank would cost $2,800. So, um, you know, what it would cost to have it installed, whether they could use the, the pump, you know, that's on the underground storage tank, you know, so maybe we have parts that could be used for the other. Um, you know, to figure so out they would prefer that we go this route instead of letting. Gillespie. The auditors, the tank, yeah. I haven't, you know, I kind of, you know, I had said that I would ask for their blessing, and it was an email from Skip just before I came down that said that the auditors really don't want to be in a position of, of blessing our digression from the purchasing policy. Um, however, it is just a policy, and if we feel that it's the best route for the town, yeah. well, then... The diesel's never been locked in. Nobody will lock it in. Right, yeah. So. Yeah. So, and Gillespie, since they've entered the bidding process, they have been the cheapest price each year. Is that true? For oil and propane. For oil and propane, yeah. yeah. So, so we're no pretty... place will lock in diesel since it's so... Right, yeah. yeah. So they have, you know, been... I'd, I'd still go over that way myself. I, I would prefer that. Yeah. Is there an urgency to... Yes, it has to be. We have to get that tank out of the ground as soon as possible. Obviously, in another month, or two okay, months so the ground. You can put in the town. Quite no, often. no. I mean the ground's going to be frozen. And you're not going to be able to remove it on, on an underground tank. Yeah. So, so there is an urgency. Yeah. yeah. Winter. You know, winter is our our deadline. So. Yeah. Yeah. I don't have a problem trusting this company myself. Okay. So. All right. Yeah. Well, that's why I was hoping that yeah. Paul would be here to for that. But we can when he gets back, if he gets back. <laughs> We can talk about it some more. Yeah. But that's kind of what's happening with the, mm -hmm. with the tank. Um, and, you know, if, well, I wanted Paul here for these other these loan things, too. Um, but, you know, I also want you here, too. So, um, 7 o'clock. We'll give him half an hour. <laughs> Do you want to keep these for the minutes? Sure. As far as the yep. amounts? Yeah, no, those are helpful. And I can just step back. Okay. Yeah, we'll let you know when we get there. Which you know, we'll probably get there pretty quickly, actually. Just mm -hmm. we're down on the list. Um, good. So um, this was another thing I was hoping that Paul would be here for, but I can pretty much explain the situation. So for the emergency generator, um, we have talked about this a little bit in the past. Um, right now. 
the transfer switch, um, which would basically be kicked in if there was a power outage, the transfer switch is manual. So in, in the past, um, let's say there's a snowstorm, it's middle of the winter, it's 20 below, and the power goes out. Larry Eldred would come down and manually transfer. I always thought we had an automatic on No, we don't. No, it's a manual. So he would come down and flip yeah. it so the generator would kick in and keep, and keep the pipes yeah. from the school from freezing. Mm -hmm. So, of course, he's retired now, yeah. and he has been urging on the town. We talked about it last year a little bit, um, that we put in an automatic transfer switch. Yeah. Um, so I called Brookfield Services um, to get a sense of how much it would cost. Um, it would cost the town um, somewhere between $2,000 and $2,500 for them to come and put in an automatic transfer switch. Where would it be for uh, the generator itself? Um, what, the fire station? I think it would be the manual switch is on a pole outside the building, so I imagine that that's where the automatic switch would, would be. And just change one out for the other? Yeah, change one out for the other. Um, one question that the Brookfield Services had was whether um, you know the school was a 200 amp setup or a 400 amp setup, and my guess was that it was 200 amps. Larry thought that that was probably true. He was going to check and find out. Um, yeah. The guy from Brookfield Services said that often, if there was a uh, say the school had electric heat, chances are it would be 400 amp. Okay. Yeah. So, um, and I haven't heard back from Larry, but that, if it was 400 amps, it would probably be around $4,000 for this transfer switch. Okay, and he's calculating in the fire station as well. Yeah, the transfer switch would work for everything. Everybody, yeah. yeah. We could see if the fire department would be willing to be the person to come and manually do the switch. Um, you know, somebody would have to be responsible now that yeah. Larry doesn't want to be. Definitely be easier just to have it be automatic. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah, so too. Yeah. Eliminate. Yeah, if, Human error. Error. <laughs> if it is some other type of emergency where the power goes out and the fire department is dealing with other stuff, yeah. you know, this would save them having to worry about that. Yeah, unless right. the switch is right in their fire department. Right, yeah. That'd yeah. be the only way, yeah. yeah. So, um, and we could use what's left in the school fund to pay for it. Oh, um, yeah. We, you know, um, that would be another expense that we could draw from. Um, or um, I'm sure we could, you know, probably find the money out. Also, but I know the money is there for yeah. that, and it would just be a. That'd like be the a, right way to go. Yeah. Okay. So uh, I'll make a motion. Yeah. Um, I would make a motion that we. Um, contract with Brookfield Services to put in an automatic transfer switch for the emergency generator at the uh, school um, with the estimated price and uh, we could wait um, well with the estimated price of between two thousand and twenty five hundred dollars and that we use funds in the uh, school is it just called a school fund at this point, school building fund, that we use the, those funds to pay for it? And I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Okay. Good. Okay. Yeah, that one's done. Now we can get that one yeah. ordered. Because mm -hmm. I don't know how busy they are, but right. just get us on the books. Yeah, so. us on the books for it. So I put the animal control officer on our agenda. Um, pretty much the problem is solved, um, but just to review it for the public record, um, our animal control officer, Kim Silk, um, his dog um, had an incident with a neighborhood dog, um, and Kim was very upset about it and felt that it might re reflect it badly on him as an animal control officer, and also he was worried about um, the incident and the fact that it was his dog. Um, that it would become a liability for the town. Um, so um, I contacted Tim, Kim and we talked about it a little bit and, and I told him that I didn't feel that it, that so far we hadn't heard anything from anybody about this incident and that I didn't feel that it really was a liability to the town. It was something that happened between him and a neighbor. Um, yep. 
and also the fact that he took care of it in a very responsible way um, also reflects on you know the animal control officer setting a good example for everyone else and you know I also mentioned that his work um, as the animal control officer has definitely been of benefit and an asset to the town um, so he said that he would talk to his neighbor um, to see, and I'm not sure what he had to talk to the neighbor about, but that's what he felt he should do. Um, he did talk to the neighbor, and everything seemed okay there, so he felt that he could continue as the animal control officer. Okay. Um, so I left him a message saying that, um, that thank you, or just <laughs> great, um, and that um, I would discuss this at our select board meeting. And, yeah. Um, and then I felt that the rest of the select board would feel the same way. I mean, I've heard. Yep, yeah, heard from all of us. Yep. Yeah. Uh, so I will let him know that you know he has still has the select board's um, support, and that if he feels that it would be necessary for him to be reappointed, um, and we discussed that earlier, you know, as the meeting started, um, that uh, because we never really see received a formal. Um, resignation and, right. and um, past that, that um, I don't think that's really necessary. So he's still? He's still the animal control officer. Okay, yeah. good. Okay. Yeah. Um, so, let's see. Um, you kind of skipped over me. We did, right. Would you like to come next? Good, because we need to fill in the time here. We're going to wait until after 8 initially. Right. How could I have done that? I don't know. <laughs> I'm sitting quietly in my corner. Brandy can say for this to see the play. I don't know. What do you want to know? What's the store coming down? Ah, oh, next one. <laughs> Can I write that down here as a for sure? Sure, yeah, no. You know where I am, but it won't make any difference. I, keep I overheard you mention there's another snag, but... Well, I'm, what I'm waiting for now is... Um, thunder? Sounds yeah. like it. Yeah, Lauren Oaks was going to write uh, another purchase and sale agreement. Right. And that was like... When, when did we get that well, you, email letter? Like three yeah. weeks ago. And you mentioned it at our last slip board meeting. Yeah, yeah. still waiting for that, it. so okay. I emailed her again. Okay. And I think she also needs to, she also needs to approve the, uh, the deed, mm -hmm. which Sarah Field says she's ready to go to a closing. I tried to do an email to both of them, so hopefully, hopefully they would like talk to each other. Although I would still like to be in the right. loop. I don't know if that's yeah. going to happen. But. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. We're still hoping for something to happen this fall. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. We have another, uh, uh, the phase one environmental site assessment, which we had to have done again, is only good for six months. And so if we don't get the uh, uh, property ownership, I think it's October 16th, then we'll be another, but the full phase one and phase two stuff really wasn't FEMA stuff, it was really state stuff to qualify us for the soil removal clean and all that stuff. Yeah. But, you know, the clean site letter was really the only part that people mm -hmm. were concerned with. Okay. So everything that went before that was state. Okay. Well, maybe yeah. if we're close to that, they could grant us an extension or something? Maybe, or maybe it doesn't. Or maybe we could not even worry about <laughs> it. Right. Yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> it's, it's kind of been out there on the horizon just waiting. <laughs> <laughs> waiting, waiting, waiting. Answering questions for people. It's funny how many people don't even pay attention and don't know that this has all been going on for five years. Yep. <laughs> so, what's going to yeah. happen with that store? Mm -hmm. yeah. So in the meantime, we have uh, an estimate for um, a loan from the Union Bank. Mm -hmm. uh, Hundred and fifty thousand dollars. We mm -hmm. thought it would cover everything. We probably won't need that much, but mm -hmm. it's a line of credit, not a revolving line of credit, but a line of credit. So that will allow us to get the deed. No, with it. Yes, exactly. Yeah, we'll, we'll have to have that. Get the deed. Right, exactly. To purchase yeah. the property. So the fund, there, there'll be a big, big chunk to uh, purchase the property, and another big chunk to do the demolition, and mm -hmm. and then you know, two thousand dollars here and there for other right. things. So. Um, 
Union Bank is our regular bank, so we didn't go out to mm -hmm. bid. Mm -hmm. But um, I figure, you know, at 1%, even if we borrow the money for half a year, mm -hmm. the, uh, might be less than $1,000 worth of interest. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah, I'm in favor of that myself. Yeah. And they're yeah, very, they're so very we've got the money ready to yeah. get started on this as quick as possible. Exactly. Yeah. We're running out of time again. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And at one point, uh, Lauren Oates mentioned getting the money. It, it, she said it would take another week or so to get the money from FEMA. And we, all along, they've been saying that this is a reimbursement. So I don't even want to wait the extra week or two yeah. to get the money right. it just depend on the well. reimbursement yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. so what we have here is um, uh, Union Bank is pleased to offer the following terms for a grant anticipation note to satisfy $210,000 which is literally the total more than the total but the loan amount would be $150,000 the loan date September 24 the maturity date January 24 that should be fine uh, payment principal plus interest due at maturity, no penalty for prepayment, tax exempt. Um, in the event the town accepts the terms of this bid, the following loan documents will need to be executed by the select board, which are all here. There's a note, resolution, IRS form 8038G, tax certificate, I'm sure Randy knows what I'll add Signed acceptance of Union Bank proposal letter. And then we have to give them a copy of the original warning, which I, I hope is tonight's rule. Okay. And a copy of select four minutes awarding a bid to the Union Bank. Mm -hmm. Most recent annual report and a copy of the grant award letter, which we've already given them. Um, Please indicate your acceptance. Well, she wrote this to me, so I guess I'll sign this one. But the grant acceptance, in grant anticipation borrowing resolution, you have to sign. You want me to read this? It's a lot of whereas. The select board are all, okay. all standard whereas. Select board are right. authorized and empowered to borrow money on the credit of the town mm -hmm. in anticipation of the receipt of a grant from the hazardous. Mitigation program, blah blah blah. Kind of look very at a meeting they're all held on September 23, which is today. Mm -hmm. Good. And so on and so forth. So that's one thing that has to be signed. Okay. Uh, then we have a grant anticipation note that needs to be signed. There's room okay. here for both of you. I don't it seems like it was cut off, so I'll have to find out if Randy and I have to sign that also. Okay. Grant Anticipation Borrowing Tax Certificate, um, Select Board or Majority and the Treasurer sign that one, Municipal Bond Post Issuance Compliance Procedures, I don't think, this is in the bond, so I don't think we really need to be Okay. Who wants to start? Um, so, uh, let's make a motion first. Good idea. Okay. <laughs> All right. Um, so, um, I would make a motion that we open a line of credit loan with the Union Bank for $150,000 for the um, Old Woodbury Store um, Hazard Mitigation um, Grant um, expenses. I'll second that. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Okay, so. So now we'll sign. The resolution, the grant, the resolution is the first thing. I'm still at the majority. Hopefully. Yeah. Um, and then the next one is the grant anticipation for the I thought it was missing. Uh, <laughs> I, mean, I forgot my blue oh, pen. Oh, that's right. <laughs> Would you like it back? Randy? Yeah, I'll keep track of it when you leave mm -hmm. somebody. Yeah. Right. <laughs> <coughs> well, I found this one out there too sometimes. Okay. <laughs> That's a freebie. That's a freebie. <laughs> And then we have 
appropriate anticipation note. Like I said, you guys can sign on those two lines and I'll see if, if there was maybe a little text. Mm -hmm. And this one is a tax certificate for grant anticipation borrowing. The uh, note is being issued for the purpose and acquisition for the purpose, the acquisition and demolition of the property located at 365 Susan. checklist by yeah. I came in fortunately I came in Friday and uh, didn't realize that that was the last day for letting the uh, oh yeah the no, 20th was the last day for mm -hmm. sending a letter to the Secretary of State saying that I did that so okay. I did that but mm -hmm. most of the letters came back anyway so. Mm -hmm. Did you have to purge many of them? Or? We don't. Act, we can't actually purge oh. them unless they write back and they say we can purge oh, them. Okay. Yeah. Or if they don't, we have to wait two years before we can purge them. So, yeah. you know, so you have them on a special list. Right, right. Yeah. Challenge is what they call it. Yeah. Yeah. And they still can vote if they show up, but they have to prove that they actually do still live here. Yeah. And there are some of them we probably could track down with their current address, to find mm -hmm. new addresses. Yeah. Good. Okay. Yeah. Some of the funny other stuff going on. Day to day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Good. Okay. All right. Thank All you. Right. So let's see. Um, okay. So why don't we? Um, let's see. Let's see. Susan. Hi. Can you tell us why? Mm -hmm. Why you are here? Um, yes, help us I, what to do sure. <laughs> I would like to thank you both mm -hmm. uh, for doing such a great job as select board members. Oh, I don't think you can thank you tonight. I really don't. And sitting here, I'm just like, thank you. You guys are really doing a great job. I'm sorry Paul's not here, but I understand there's a car accident down the road. Yeah, and. Um, I'm also here to uh, let you all know that we need pies and people for Bessie Drennan coming up this week right. here in Woodbury. And uh, to be sure to call me or uh, Carolyn Stewart or somebody to mm -hmm. offer to help or make pies or soups. Mm -hmm. That would be wonderful. Mm -hmm. um, Steve told me he's not going to be there this yeah. year to do the dishes. So would you like to join us? I would not like to. <laughs> well, my yeah. husband won't do it because he'd just drop every plate. <laughs> what do they have on Woodbury's front page forum or whatever? Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But I just, uh, I, I'm here to also talk to you about the um, 
the five-year grant, okay. the, not grant, but the five-year uh, term period of the tank. Okay. And we, we did just talk about that, but um, okay. before you came, but it was scheduled at 725. So, okay. um, yeah, let me let's um, maybe you just we'll go we'll go over because um, so and it would be good to give you some of the background for why we're right. thinking of the five-year contract. So, um, mm -hmm. uh, let's see. Well, I don't want to throw a wrench. No, Thank no, I'm just, I'm just trying to think. Because your decisions are usually good ones. Okay. I, I'm just concerned that it didn't go, go out to bed. It may not have to. It may not be the expense yeah. may not warrant going out to bed. It's, it looks like it's going to fall between the $1,000 and $8,000 range, which means that we do have to contract contact a number of contractors. Right. So right. my th thought was, um, you know, for tonight, and I think the mm -hmm. select board... Paul, again, he wasn't at the last meeting, but Brian and I are kind of leaning towards this five-year commitment. But what I would like to do before we make that commitment is do due diligence to um, to contract contact. Mm -hmm. uh, there are no, um, I was given the names of two contractors that install above ground storage tanks, um, and I called them and left a message, and I haven't heard back from. Them. I did that this afternoon, so um, they haven't really had a chance to call me back. But I'd like to get a sense of how much it's going to cost the town to purchase and install a tank on their own. Mm -hmm. um, and then we'll, so we'll have a figure of how much that would cost the town. Mm -hmm. uh, I know I've been given a figure of $2,800 to purchase a tank. This would be a double wall above ground tank. Mm -hmm. right. um, but then there's the installation of costs. Um, so I want to try to get two estimates um, from these two contractors. Mm -hmm. I have gotten, um, I have contacted and spoken with three contractors that would um, oversee the removal of the underground storage tank. Basically mm -hmm. what happens then is that somebody has to be there to watch the actual removal and, and our road crew would excavate it and remove it but mm -hmm. somebody has to be there to make sure there's no contamination and mm -hmm. Blah, blah, blah. I don't know what all the requirements oh, is are. Is there a health officer like yourself that's going to be there? I'm sure. Um, well, this, the You're person, the years. environmental group that would be overseeing it would be have mm -hmm. all the knowledge that um, they would need to okay. make an assessment. When the tanks were removed up at the old store, Brad Wheeler was the environmental consultant right. who oversaw that. Yeah. And, so. and then the same contractor would then take the tank. Um, mm -hmm open it up and do an official cleaning of it, re removal of any of the remaining diesel fuel. Mm -hmm. um, and the plan is to have almost all of the fuel out except where you might start getting sludge on the bottom of the tank. Um, and, and so is there a salvage value to that tank? Or it would basically be scrap metal, so it would probably get thrown in the cup of soup pile um, in the t on the town. Mm -hmm. but, and I can explain that if you want. <laughs> there would be a value if we didn't decommission it. Right. But decommissioned it, its only value is its weight. Yeah, okay. it's basically scrap metal. But they would they would remove any sense of contamination so that it could be go to scrap metal and we wouldn't have to pay, you know, for a special hazardous waste. Mm -hmm. um, Just got to <coughs> guys to clean so the So there's no <laughs> salvage value in that? Uh, no. No. Is that really be not for a culvert or anything? Probably too small for a culvert. It's too, too small, short. too short. Um, it might be worth if we hauled it up to all metals, twenty-five bucks mm -hmm. or something. Well, that's it's what the road crew. Long. That's what the road crew would do. They have a pile of culverts. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All the old metal culverts that they remove. Put them there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And they save them up, mm -hmm. and then they bring them in and get money, yeah. scrap metal money, and then they buy their cup of soup for. Yeah. The winter, oh, winter plowing. <laughs> yeah. well, I know some of the private roads, like the one we live on, could certainly use a few uh, culverts. I didn't know that. Bob's been looking for... Well, these culverts that are in the scrap pile are... I mean, you're welcome to go up and look at them, but they're pretty well rusted out and they're pretty much trash. They're yeah, pieces. You know, you might go yeah. cut off an end and... But we could, you know, the road crew would be glad to save those that are actually... Um, yeah, I'm sure they do. Save yeah. the ones that are still yeah. reusable. Yeah. Sometimes they're too big for a, a road like yeah. your camp road. Yeah. And they have been, some people have taken them for driveway access, mm -hmm. or mm -hmm. so they do get mm -hmm. the ones that are in decent shape. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, 
and and with with the town, um, so for removing the tank, there is a zero interest loan mm -hmm. that the town can take, um, and we probably will do that. It's going to cost roughly about twenty two hundred dollars to remove the underground storage tank between this paying the site assessment person to be there and for them to clean the tank, um, and then but this zero percent interest loan will also pay for the, a new tank and for the installation. So if we go our own route, we can finance it through a 0% uh, interest loan from the state. This would be from the state. How many years? Um, probably no more than five is, seems to be and the state. the amount? What was the amount? It would depend on the amount that it costs. Oh, okay. It was yeah. $5,000. Yeah. Yeah. And hopefully, uh, yeah, I, don't, I don't have that figure out. That's okay. what I'm trying to find from. Yeah. So, um, and then there, you know, there are requirements, which I haven't researched yet, but I, I have printed out the booklet, the town, there are requirements in overseeing the maintenance um, and, and use of an above ground system, just like there is with a fellow. So that would be one route for the town to, um, to uh, find out how much it's going to cost to have a purchase and install an above ground storage tank and then um, decide whether we want to do that and, and um, also get a better handle on what okay. the town requirements would be to yeah. over, oversee. I know the town is in good hands. Uh, yeah. So thank you so, very much. And the other route, mo and most towns do this, the other route is to have the fuel supplier mm -hmm. supply the tank and mm -hmm. do the installation um, and also maintain it and deal with all the regulations. Mm -hmm. So it would be basically be but we have to make a Gillespie's uh, mm -hmm. has asked for a five-year commitment, mm -hmm. um, so that they don't put in the tank and then next year we go with someone else. They would probably remove the tank. The tank basically would belong to them. So would, after, yeah. Just wondering, after five years, would we own the tank then, or would they? We have to sign up for them again, or go through the whole thing again? I don't know the answer to that yeah. question, but that's a good good question mm -hmm. to ask. So I can ask that question. Yeah. Good job. How do you about? So, um, so that's the two. Those are the two scenarios. I think um, what we'll do is we won't make a decision tonight. Um, I'll get the figures. We we do have a kind of a time constraint in that. You know, I understand. When, I understand. This that. has to be done before winter. I understand that, so, and, and and I think you're on a timeline that there's really no time to put it out for bids. Right, and I don't. When I understand in bid making and receiving, et cetera, you just don't have the time right. to do that. I don't think and we I have to, that. and I don't think the cost would be over eight thousand dollars. So I don't okay. think that you know the purchasing policy. Anything over eight thousand yeah. dollars, we have to do the official it's official bid. Official bid. Right. Anything yeah. between a thousand and eight thousand dollars, we can you know contact different contractors and get a price yeah. from them, and then go with the best price. Um, but that so. would just put a wedge in, you know, moving forward. Well, that I think I could have that within a couple of days. Yeah. Um, you know, of course, we can't make an official select board decision right. outside of an open meeting. Um, mm -hmm. But it might give us. Um, well, so we'll make a decision at the next select board meeting, which should be October 14th. Right. Um, I'll try to get a sense from the contractors of when they could do this, and if it um, if it looks like it would be an imposition to them to not have a decision as soon as possible, we'll just schedule a special select board meeting for that decision. Yeah, if it gets to be a time constraint. Right, yeah, if it is. So. And of course we have to coordinate with the above ground people and the below ground people because, you know, the, the, the idea, the plan is to put the above ground storage tank where the below ground storage tank is. Um, yeah, it's been a good spot for a yeah. few years. <laughs> yeah, so, yeah. so that's that's where we'll go, and I should have some figures, and I'll I, I can share those figures with everyone um, before the select board meeting, so we have a sense. Good. Mm -hmm. Okay. So um, let's see. The Blueberry Hill folks are here, so let's. Let them have the floor. And, um, You'll be right back. Oh, okay. okay. You're not leaving, are you? I could briefly go over the winter road salt contract, but we're waiting for um, John. So, it's pretty much, um, so, uh,
Last year, uh, the state contract for road salt went to a company called Apalachee um, something or other, um, and they're based out of Pennsylvania. And they sent rates um, to the state and to the different districts, the VTRANS districts, um, for what they would charge for road salt. Um, and they were awarded the contract this year also. Um, yeah. So last year, um, we were notified that the, the company American Rock Salt that we have bought uh, road salt from for many years through, uh, and then supplied by Dubois uh, contracting, that they didn't participate in the state um, bid right, for, yeah. for what, some complicated reasons. I'm not quite sure what, but, but they were also offering uh, road salt to towns. Yeah, because um, yeah, we bought it from them last year. Yeah, so yeah. Bought, and last year they were substantially less than the state bid price. Um, yeah. And that's true this year too. So this year um, for the Appalachian State bid um, for District 7, which we're part of now, is um, $89. And I also had a email. That's a ton. That's a ton with, a, with the um, salesperson from Appalachia that is actually now $90 a ton. And then um, I received a bid from um, the American Rock Salt um, for $79 a ton. Yeah. Which is pretty much, it was, it's 50 cents less than what it was last year. Really? Yeah. So um, I'm thinking that we probably want to go with the <laughs> lowest bidder. Go with the lowest bidder, yes. Um, so I would make a motion that we um, award the 2019-2020 um, uh, Town Highway Road Salt contract to um, American Rock Salt for the price of $79 per ton. Second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So, and so we'll, um, let's see. And they didn't get the state bid? They didn't even... Oh, they didn't try. Didn't oh. even try. Um, and it's, I, you know, they explained the reason last year um, and the, yeah, um, has something to do with the way the state is, is doing the bidding. The bidding you know, so it just uh, didn't, yeah. didn't want to do that, I guess. So. Made it too complicated. Yeah, they made it. Basically, that's that's what it. That's kind of the gist of it. Yeah. Um, so, but they, you know, and last year they did notify different towns, um, but they were still supplying. Um, so um, I can sign this later, and then. Um, Fill out the estimated tonnage, whatever, and I will send this um, contract um, to um, to American Rock Salt. So that's done. Um, so <coughs> Blueberry Hill Road gravel request. Yeah, Stayman actually, Michael. Hmm. Stayman. Stayman. Okay. Well, that's yeah. Okay. And is that currently coming out of Fry's Pit up in Danville? It comes out from whatever pit it's available. There's like okay. three different pits that they get it from. Yeah, I saw some loads last week and the week before yeah. that were out of that pit, and they okay. were really nice. Okay, so what was the name of the pit? We can make a request. I believe it's there. Fry's. It's up there. Fry's. It's just okay. yeah. low down, though. Yeah, there's two. Either it usually comes from Fry's or um, Bigfords, which has a different name now. Um, oh, really? And Check A. Yeah, so, uh, but it depends on, and there's a third place that they also get it from. It depends on who has the available um, material. material. Yeah. So do you want one inch stay mat or the three quarter inch, one inch stay mat, that the kind of standard? Three quarter to one would be fine. Okay, all right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. How many loads would you like? How about a couple of tandem truck loads. What are they, 16 yards or big 14 truck? Yards, 14 yards for the big truck. Yeah. yeah. That sounds good? Definitely. Okay. Um, so, um, I mean, we'd like to see more. We'd love to see three or four trucks up there because that will look <laughs> pretty hard this year. But, uh, All the roads have taken a beating, with the, especially with the heavy rains that we had earlier this summer. Yeah. That's why I'm only asking for two. Okay, how are you guys going to spread it once you get it down? Monty's going to use his York right now. Yeah, okay, okay, so we need to spread it out pretty well then. Well, he needs to hook his chains right. We need to have whatever driver. 
is clear enough to do it. Now, would you be using the town's equipment? Will we be using the town's equipment? Uh, the town is happy to deliver the gravel. The road is really too narrow for the grader to do a, to do a, a proper job on that. It's, it's too hard for the grader to do. It's so, difficult, yeah. Yeah, yeah. But that's what, as long as they back it up yeah. to the top of the hill and, and that's spread kind of, it, then they should be yeah, able to rake it. Yeah. Oh, you were requesting that the town rake it? Or was Monty going to do that? Monty's going to do yeah. that as far as So we just got to drop it off for you. Yeah, but don't dump it in a pile. So no, spread it. And spread it. And spread it as he dump it. Yeah, that's, yeah. That's and we'll try to pack it. And yeah. yeah, I think that's doable. Um, I think as long as they're headed downhill when they lift up the body, it should be okay. Yeah. Yeah, and that's where we need it the most. I mean, we're going to take care of the stuff up oh, on top. If you could mark the road beforehand, where you want the dump to start, to start yeah. and end, then they'll work. Yeah. Then they'll, they'll do the best they can to, to have it within that. It would be helpful for them to know. For sure. Um, and I could ask Greg to just kind of eyeball the, what's, what it's like up there to see if you needed more. Um, uh -huh. And he and, and then you know, they might supply you with more than two if they felt that it was needed. Well, that would be nice. Okay. Um, and appreciate it. Okay. Uh, Greg might look at his budget and say no. Well, he always <laughs> does, but... Um, <laughs> then he finds a little room somewhere. Well, well, there's still quite a bit of money left in the gravel budget for this fiscal year. Oh, good. Um, so, um, Potentially. So. But, you know, there's always, the, of course, next spring and more flooding and erosion is when the gravel, that's when the gravel really gets eaten up during mud season. And then, of course, this year with the heavy rains that we had. So, um, it's still in one of them outside as we came here. Right. Yeah. <laughs> Sounds like it's let up a little bit now. Yeah. But, um, you know, this, we, this is kind of, we had a lot of people from different class four roads come in and request. Yeah. Um, and we have given gravel. Everybody, that's kind of, yeah. yeah. That's kind of a standard thing that we do. Um, and two so loads has been the, pretty much the standard for everybody this year, I think, right? Yeah. 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 So, so, um, so Greg will grumble, but if the select board has approved it, then he's okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> he's just worried about overspending his budget. Right. Um, but, but, um, so I will, we'll do this officially. I'll make a motion okay. that we, um, uh, give the Blueberry Hill Road folks um, at least two loads of gravel and with the discretion from our road foreman that if another load is required that, that, that he, can. he can do that. Yeah. Second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So Thank you. I will let Greg know this in the morning and um, I'll try to get have an idea of when it would be delivered. Um, so that you know and can stake out the spots. Um, he, I'll use some fluorescent flag, you know, hang up. Whatever, whatever, just so it's indicated to him. Um, and then there, I assume that there's a place up at the, I mean, I've driven up to the top where the houses are, and there would be a place for the 10-wheeler to turn around up there. Greg yeah. probably knows that already. Well, right now we dropped a couple of trees in it to give them more clearance to lift the body up there. Oh, okay. Well, that would be appreciated, too. Yeah. And those guys might even just back right up from the bottom. And they might. You can drop it on the way down out. They might, yeah. But yeah, I think there's... plenty of room. We'll I think there's room up there for them to turn around, too. Yeah. yeah. But May I do a few, few points on it? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I, I think Greg is aware of the situation. Uh -huh. Yeah. He's brought gravel there before, so... Yeah. Okay. So I will let you know when it will arrive. <coughs> Okay. Try to yes. let you know sometime tomorrow. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. I, I have a, a statement. Sure. I'm going to pay, not pay my full tax this year for a reason. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think, you know, taxes, I noticed they went up right. this year. And uh, I found the service to the roads has gone way down. Okay. Blue, dog Pond Road was gravel and was um, graded once the whole summer. It's what? been graded more than once. Huh? It's been graded more than once. I travel that road every day doing beaver stuff, and it's been graded more than once. It has? It has. And most of your taxes going up was because of the school merger. It was because of the school merger. The municipal tax 
did go up some. The town highway budget did go up some, but the majority of that rise in taxes came from the school tax, which the town has no control over, and most of that was because we're now paying for two other towns um, worth of building repair, etc., and school financing. So the, the Woodbury actually did not benefit uh, tax-wise from the merger, which was sort of the whole idea originally for the merger is to, um, we act, our taxes actually went up fairly significantly through the school tax. All right. Okay, so it's... See, you're saying, <coughs> you're saying Dog Pond Road was um, graded more than once this summer? More, you know, at least two or three or four times. In fact, it has just recently been graded. All right. Okay. I and and I, travel, I travel that road pretty much every morning. All right. So... I stand corrected. Okay. Gets a lot of traffic on it. What? I mean, yeah, there's a lot of traffic on it. Oh. And the roads are pretty rough at the beginning of the summer just because of the these type of weather events. It was, you know, the road crew was trying to keep up with just fixing serious erosion on most of the hills. Dog Pond is nice. It's kind of leveled the whole way with a few little rises, but um, so they were pretty busy elsewhere and may not have been able to keep up with the grading, you know, up until the middle of of June and June. Right. Okay. Okay. Right. So <laughs> go to the school board, the uh, Union District School Board, and complain. Yeah. <laughs> That's like talking to a brick wall. I know. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. But so. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Have a good night. Yeah. yeah. Night, John. Good night. Good night, Brandy. <coughs> Okay, um, let's see, so let me check that one off, um, we've done the underground storage tank, we've done the winter road salt, okay, so, um, why don't we do the ones, I, you know, I'm kind of feeling doubtful that Paul's going to make it, but, um, so, uh, the Buck Lake Brook Cabot Road Repair, um, so I have talked to the contractor, Daryl Matthews. We sent them a copy of the contract. They're gonna, they had, they read it over, no problems with it. They're, he's gonna sign it and send it to the town and then the select board will sign it. Um, and I also talked to him, it, it sounds like they had given in the bid an anticipated starting date of October 14th. Um, they've been doing some extra work for um, Fish and Wildlife, um, so they're, anticipated starting date now is around the 21st of October. Um, in the contract, we asked for a week's notification, so um, and they'll try to give us, give us that. Um, they anticipate four days of work. Nice. Um, so I also talked to them about the situation with the detour and, um, you know, if there might be an alternative. And um, Daryl Matthews did say that they could um, set it up so that there would be um, a lane available um, for um, probably for residents only and then we would basically close the road off except for town residents. Um, I talked to Greg about that a little bit and you know when we were unsure of when this would actually happen, Greg had the thought of putting some gravel you know where the where the blocks are now on the side so that there would be more room like for plowing. So you built the road out further right, yeah. to the right on the way yeah. up. Yeah. So, um, Greg is thinking that we could do that in addition to whatever, um, you know, Daryl Matthews, the Matthews excavating definitely would prefer just to have the road totally closed, yeah. but um, I, I don't see us resolving the situation with the detour um, in time. So, um, so what Greg and I were thinking was to um, have somebody from Matthews excavating come where we could talk about having, you know, one lane open, how, how we would do that. Um, uh, Matthews excavating said they could provide stop signs or blocks or, you know, whatever we might need for stuff like that. Um, would that be an extra cost if they had to hire it would be an extra. It would be an extra cost, but the, the grant is for $150,000 and their bid was for $21,000. <laughs> so we'd, we have some money to play with. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I'm sure there would be yeah. some extra cost. So they just, um, they um, just hire somebody to... So that's kind of what we're yeah. thinking of now, is to have um, one, have the road closed, 
um, to anybody who's uh, fleet people or something like that. But, and then let all of the local residents who need to use that road to get from work to back home or vice versa, um, let them know that there is this lane open um, and that they're free to use it. Or I've contacted the quarry. They're going to go out the Cabot Way until the work is done. Um, so, um, you know, so things are moving along. And hopefully that'll, I think that'll work. That, that would be a nice alternative. We were, you know, Greg was thinking, well, could we drive up through the cemetery and up onto Flat Street and around and stuff? <laughs> no, that's what we love Yeah, I'm sure we would. <laughs> um, so, so this is what we're, this is what we're going to try for. Um, um, so that's pretty much it for that project. Um, and then, um, just for some you know, public statement on what's happening with the old Quarry Road, um, we, the Suck Board, had a special uh, Suck Board meeting to um, come up with um, uh, a financial amount to offer the property owner, and we came up with $2,500 to offer, offer the um, property owner um, the purchase of an easement for the spur of road that connects the old Quarry Road with the Cabot Road. Um, he and then I and I had said that I would call him and make that offer to him, which I did. He told me in a phone conversation that he thought it was a fair offer, but he wasn't ready to make a decision yet. So I told him that um, you know basically that we needed to um, have a decision soon, um, and he was pretty evasive about how whether he would be able to do that or not. Um, so. I, pretty much told him that we were, we were going to be continuing with the hearing that we had already yeah. scheduled. Um, so um, about uh, four days later, he closed off the spur again. Um, and I had asked him not to do that, but for what that's worth. Um, so at this point, the spur is closed off. Um, and there's no, you know, we really aren't going to be able to use that road for um, yeah. accessibility. The stop sign is right out here. He took hanging out up. the stop sign. He took out the stop right sign. Yeah, yeah. It's leaning against the town office here. <laughs> I'll have the road crew pick it up, um, or we could leave it there. <laughs> um, so we're, we will proceed with the hearing, um, and I have more to discuss about that um, in executive session, um, which um, we will share with um, in the open meeting after our executive session. Um, so that's part, sort of where we stand with the old Quarry Road. Um, you know, we looked, there is the other spur that's right beside that, um, and then it angles off before it hits the Cabot Road. We thought, well, we could, um, we could just repair that. And uh, so I had asked um, the property owner, um, you know, if we repaired that, would that be okay with you? And um, his reply was that, um, you know that that's really not the best solution that it's dangerous and if we were to do that he would want to be able to tell us what to do uh, because it's his property which is um, this is the same property owner you're talking about same property owner. No, yeah. okay. the that's spur the old spur which was used by the town for mm -hmm. many many mm -hmm. years is right beside the new one but it does mm -hmm. you know as it gets to the cabin road it does here often mm -hmm. it's very there's a very steep bank there mm -hmm. um, it was a hazard that's why um, this, yeah, and the spur that is there now was built um, right after Hurricane Irene in anticipation of the cattle road being closed to you know, put in that big box culvert that's there. Um, so Laura has been doing some research on, on the new spur, um, and we do have the FEMA report with the materials and stuff, and, but it doesn't really, it, there's nothing that really specifically addresses the spur. So um, it just addresses the repair of that the whole road, um, the old quarry road, which was pretty much brought back up to class four um, standards for the, when it was used as a detour. Yeah. Um, so um, we are doing more research into the, the spur because there is a kind of a dispute over who actually did the building of it. Um, but that might be a new point, really. And that would be good for us to have that information, but that might not be necessary. You won't know until we get there, so we will continue. Um, 
So the hearing on October 9th will probably go ahead? Yes. There's no, that's going to go ahead. Yep. That's so, planned. And that's at the town hall? At we'll, we'll meet at the town hall at 11 a.m. We'll um, conduct a site visit. So we'll go up to the spur. Um, mm -hmm. And um, people can ask questions, um, mm -hmm. try to give a brief history. Um, and then the actual hearing will um, occur at the, in the town hall um, after that. Um, and we will have um, uh, our town lawyer, oh, um, Paul, yeah. will be representing the town in the hearing. Um, the select board is the panel judge. <laughs> so, um, which still seems kind of strange to me. But, um, so who's going to represent the town and asking the town lawyer will. The town lawyer, okay. Yeah. Paul will. Yeah. So is he also going to like run the hearing? No, um, I guess probably I will be running the hearing oh. after being um, counseled by our town lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe you could get our moderator to do it. We could. Oh. That'd be nice. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I could ask him. He probably would. <laughs> he would probably definitely be better than me. <laughs> So that's pretty much all I want to say in open meeting about um, that situation, um, and we will be discussing it a little bit further in executive session tonight. Um, and if there's anything um, that we want to share publicly about that, we will open up the meeting and, and do that um, after the executive session. Um, and if no one's here to hear it, then it will be part of the special events. Okay, so uh, moving on to um, the truck replacement, um, we again had kind of postponed this decision so that um, we would have Paul with us, and we could do that again because technically we won't really need any um, need to use the the line of um, credit option that we will that we have kind of prearranged with the Union Bank until we, the um, actual cab and chassis arrive. A Charlotte one, which would be sometime next summer. Okay. So we could put that off. Um, Just incurring that it's going to be in the town report and the highway budget. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do so yeah, we still have a little time for that, or do we need to do it tonight? We need to do it before we put together next year's fiscal year. Okay. So, you know, yeah. Yeah. December. So, so November, if, December. If, um, if we could do it, it'll be on the agenda for the next, next meeting. <laughs> Have it early in the agenda. <laughs> yeah. So I do want to go over the the Vermer and uh, Mower because um, we there are two options that we can we can go with the Union Bank or we can pursue this um, uh, Vermont Municipal Equipment Loan through the uh, State Treasurer's um, Department. Um, so it would uh, be good to have Brandy here to hear this. Um, uh, so we could just go over that just. For public knowledge yeah. of what those two are, um, and uh, so last at our last select board meeting, we went over um, the terms um, with the Union Bank for the um, for the what we call the Burmer and the uh, mower uh, wood chipper a uh, wood um, brush hog uh, attachments that would go on the bucket loader. Um, so with the Union Bank, um, we had asked for. Um, a five-year uh, loan term and a ten-year loan term, um, and we I could go over those briefly um, again tonight. Um, so the Union Bank with a ten-year um, loan um, term, that would require approval at town meeting in March, um, because um, and it, it would be the interest loan, would, the interest would be four point four point five percent, the yearly uh, payment. Um, on October 1st would be $6,461.35. The total interest that we would pay over the term of that 10-year loan would be $13,613.44. $13, the five-year um, loan with the Union Bank would be a 3% interest rate. Um, and the yearly payment that we would be making it could be made with select board approval and not town approval. Um, and the yearly payment that we would be making would be $11,154.83. And the total um, interest payment that we would be making over that five-year 
loan term would be four thousand seven hundred and seventy four dollars and seventeen cents. Um, so, and I know we had originally talked about trying to set up this loan so that we were basically paying about what we pay on an average yearly payment for renting the mower. Mm -hmm. um, so um, the the ten year loan would be close; it would still be a little bit above. Um, and then, of course, the, the downside of that is that over the term of the loan, the 10 years, we would be paying a significant amount of money, almost $14,000 for that loan. Um, the five-year loan would be quite a bit more. It would be $6,654 above um, the 4500 $4, yearly um, amount we pay for the more. Um, so, you know, we would have to budget but that would be an increase in our highway budget to, to cover that uh, yep. by $6,654. The, the upside is, of that is, is that we would have spent far less um, total interest um, for that loan. Um, so this um, municipal, Vermont Municipal Equipment Loan, was, it was mentioned to us um, when we met with Dan Courier from the Regional Planning Commission that the State Treasurer's Department offers this loan um, for um, towns, for any any equipment purchase, really it could be a tr uh, plow truck. It could oh, be, really? Yeah. Um, but when Dan mentioned to us, he said that it was a zero percent interest loan, which is um, true um, under certain conditions. Um, <laughs> um, but t and uh, I have the uh, the application here with the ter terms. But basically, the loan would be for no more than seventy five percent. The, uh, the amount that we would need and um, of course the other thing that um, we were going to approve tonight was um, using $20,000 of the HERF fund towards this equipment purchase. Um, so that gets us into the 75% range? No, um, because it would be, it would be, you know, so using $20,000 um, of the town um, HERF fund would bring the total amount that we would be looking for in a loan down to $51,000. So um, this this Vermont municipal equipment loan would pay us seventy five percent of that fifty one thousand no. dollars. Why wouldn't they pay seventy five percent of the whole thing? Of the total. Well, they, they could do that. Um, Especially um, with zero percent. And then, uh, but our, then our yearly okay. I, you know, I hadn't even had that thought. We if we were to, I know we could we could play with the numbers for that. Um, not right now. You know. <laughs> but anyway. Um, so I had I had based what we would be at, what the loan amount that we would get from them would be thirty eight thousand two hundred fifty dollars um, based on fifty one thousand dollars of need and then it has to be paid within five years. Um, the town has to come up with a twenty five percent upfront cost, which would be twelve thousand seven hundred fifty dollars based on the fifty one thousand dollars. So if it's based on seventy one thousand dollars, our upfront cost would be more um, and then the yearly um, payment would be probably more um, and then the catch is that the only way you can get a zero percent interest rate is if two or more towns are involved in the purchase of the equipment yeah. for a single municipality to do this it's a two percent interest mm -hmm. loan and we're our, you know we're getting a three percent interest loan from the union bank yeah. so it's not a huge difference um, we could try to find out if Cabot or Callis or... Did, the, did Lord or Randy mention anything about conversations with Callis? The fact that they are, they're, um, they have been hiring out the mowing every year to some somebody who mows. Right. <laughs> and uh, their mowing person is uh, retiring, so they're looking at purchasing a tractor to mow okay. with. For like fifty thousand dollars or something? No, no. I used one with the brush hog. The attachments mm -hmm. was between seventy to eighty thousand. No, okay. that's not a used no. one. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. So that was the question: yeah. Is should we approach Callis and about sharing sure. the bill with them or renting it from them? Mm -hmm. Well, I'm trying. I mean. I, I can see, share, I mean, we'd have to talk to Greg about this, but, it, you know, the sharing idea intrigues me. Um, we could benefit from this equipment loan if we were to do that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and they may not know about that 0% interest right. and the, You know, the, the main reason that Greg would like this piece of equipment is that then the town could mow pretty much whenever they needed to, and they could also 
chop brush anytime they needed to. Um, you know, with renting the mower, we basically have to... Uh, two week span. Two week, one week span. Mm -hmm. We have to um, uh, um, apply for it or, or ask for it like a year ahead of time. We got a specific time period. Yeah. We don't have really much choice on... Rain or shine. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we have four, 40 hours basically. Although this year I think they were allowed to run it as much as they could. You, it has been 40 hours. So mm -hmm. there's like this little window where they had the mower. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Yeah, this is interesting with Callus. Yeah, looking at and this. if Callus was interested, and in, you know, so that we could use it some, they could use it some, and it kind of go back and forth. Um, Might be a good idea for Greg to go down and visit with them. Right, and then if, if the attachment would help address uh, brush cutting, um, it, would, it, would just, it does sound like it's worth pursuing, in it, and it, and and maybe they would be interested in. Um, Doing this, uh, I mean, we don't really have a, a place to put a tractor, but maybe they do. I don't know what size their garage is. But. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, their their garage mm -hmm. isn't much bigger than ours. But um, they're planning on getting it anyway. Right. So, so maybe they're. Whether we're involved yeah. or not. So maybe we could ask. Can't hurt to ask. Um, could maybe. ask. Call Denise. Yeah. Because again, there isn't. You know, the thought is is to have this. Of course, that wouldn't solve our problem with the Burmer, but we could buy that outright from the HERF fund if we wanted, mm -hmm. or yeah. we could take a smaller loan mm -hmm. for the Burmer. Um, yeah. Okay, well... Um, Maybe they'd be interested in a Burmer right. as well. <laughs> True. <laughs> True. Yeah. I don't know how big, how big this this mower thing is as far as storing that. Uh, yeah. It's smaller yeah. than a right. tractor. It's I'm basically, sure. a, you know, most of it is the boom arm. Um, you know, and then the, the more part is... Yeah, kind we of might end up have, having to put up another building or adding on yeah. something just yeah. to yeah, keep this under cover. Yeah, I don't think we have mm -hmm. much room yeah. for that. Um, so, I, and again, there isn't... Uh, we don't have to make this decision right off. I think it would be worth pursuing that just as another option, just to do that due diligence. Um, yeah, because we're not... Either one of us are not going to use that thing okay. a well, lot. Yeah. Yeah. So... Um, the burmer, the catch with that is, um, is that that is made to attach on the front of a cat bucket oh, yeah. Um And I don't know what the callus, callus has, mm -hmm. but um, we can find out. And Greg probably does know what they have. Greg probably but, does know, yeah. yeah. So, okay, so um, we'll, and the, but my feeling is with this Vermont Municipal Equipment Loan, if we go it alone, it's really not much of a deal no. for us. Mm -hmm. um, and the other part of it is, is that there's a deadline. There are two application deadlines. One is October 15th, which is coming right up. The other is in the spring for April 15th. You apply for it, and then there's a committee that decides whether or not you get the loan. So it's not a sure deal if we apply for it that we're actually going to get it anyway. Um, and it, I don't think it's really going to, you know, if we were doing it going alone, paying 2% mm -hmm. interest, um, and we're paying, you know, we could pay 3% interest mm -hmm. with that. I'm sure there is a, a difference, but, um, and I haven't done the math to figure mm -hmm. out what that would be. But, um, so and, even with the sharing with the town, you still have this competitive? Yeah, that would still be, now. yeah. And there are criteria, I mean, I have the application. Mm -hmm. It's based on need, and, um, and these are, what's the criteria? Um, Preference shall be given to joint applications. So you know, if we're going it alone, that's that's one um, thing against us. Um, uh, let's see. Criteria for making the loans are equi equitable geographical distribution, financial need, ability to repay, and um, if a town had re suffered some kind of catastrophe, like the town garage burn and all the equipment mm. up with it, yeah, that would probably um, which have you in their list. favor. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah. um. so, okay, so let's, um, mm -hmm. we'll pursue, see what Cal if Callus is interested in sharing, um, and then what that would entail, um, and um, we'll come back next, 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 next week. Next week. <laughs> which next is meeting, fine, yeah. which is fine. I mean, there isn't, yeah. we don't have to make a decision tonight. That would be nice for yeah. everybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's, you know, yeah, it's a piece of equipment that's going to set around. 11 months right. of the year. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, yeah. Greg, you know, Greg's yeah, thinking that, truck, you know, um, depending on the conditions of the roads, um, the, the brush chopper could be used in the wintertime. Mm 
um, you know, just clearing brush on the side of the road. I mean, obviously he's not going to go up um, Sherrier Hill with it without any chains on the bucket load or anything like that. But yeah, but it could be used. It could be used if there was a downtime and the opportunity was there. But um, chances are that that part concerns me of not being familiar with the equipment at all. But from right. what I heard of when you were first talking about it. It's like really big, and we already have complaints from people because their vegetation not, is being mowed down. And it's not. It's no bigger than. No bigger than the one. Than the, than the head that is on the mower that we okay. Yeah. okay. It does have a nice long boom arm. Well, that right. makes a big difference than right. going into somebody's yard. Yeah, but you can use it up, you know, for for branches that are growing into the road above. And, no. um, and I suppose we could talk to the boys about how far they want to mow back somebody's. Well, we always get more complaints when they do two passes as opposed to one, which is mm -hmm. first pass tight to the road and then second pass in more yeah. to cut back the and rush. When we had the machine ourselves and we could use it any time, we wouldn't have to go back so far because we could maintain right, we it, could do it more like a lawn. Mm -hmm. kind of, yeah. could do it really so we wouldn't have to take as much all at yeah. once. Yeah. Okay, so um, we'll keep working on that one. Um, and that's it. Um, you know, just for to finish out the town, town highway report, the road crew is um, working primarily on Sheridan Hill right now. That's for the um, fiscal year 20 um, municipal roads general permit grants and aid grant. Um, How's that coming? It's coming pretty good. I haven't seen it yet. Um, I think that they should be done this week. Yeah. Um, and I noticed they've done a little bit of work down by the school driveway for the annex building. They, they dug okay. out that catch basin. And, um, so is the town doing that or did you contract somebody else? No, the town town's doing that. Okay. Um, so Let's just keep the water out of the area. annex building. <laughs> That's one of the, that was one of the things that was done and, and there's, I think they still are planning on um, lowering the road a little bit more. They, they lowered it some last year. And it helps some, I think it, but I think the it's annex still building high, did, yeah. did flood um, this spring. I don't know if it flooded at all. You could close that window behind Yeah, I you. guess maybe I should now that it's dark and the bugs are coming in. They're going to be here tomorrow, too. Okay. He's going to be here tomorrow. Just buzzing we'll around bring our, uh, bring our <laughs> <laughs> Bring her, bring her fly plug. Bring her go. Um, <laughs> yeah, so that's, that's been their primary focus. They're hauling sand. Um, and they're still anticipating, you know, uh, the spending some time with the Hardwick um, hauling sand for them. It's usually a four-day work exchange, and mm -hmm. that's kind of, well, usually it's happened by now, but it hasn't yet, so. Um, you know, that's, that's pretty much in a very much of a nutshell of road crew work report. Um, what about, um, what else we have? Town Hall roof repair, do we have bids tonight? Um, um, no, no um, that was taken off the agenda. Okay. Um, Robin called me. She hasn't uh, gotten word. The contractors have not gotten back to her about their their estimates. Mm -hmm. So um, she'll let me know when they when they have, and we'll put it back on the agenda. Yeah. Is it a possibility that someone who already works for the town could do that work? Whoever you know, if if there's somebody that Maybe would be on payroll, no, no. Without um, uh, having to go through all the rigmarole of insurance. Well, I have stuff. a feeling I know who you're talking about, <laughs> and, and if they would want to contact Robin and take a look at it and give her an estimate, I'm sure she would be She'll open be to there. that. He's meeting yeah. tomorrow. Okay, yeah. right. Yeah, I mean, she's basically contacting local folks to to do that, and I don't know who she's contacted. But I mean, would it be a big heartache if it was somebody doing it on payroll as opposed to an outside contractor? Well, I don't think it should. Our no, town treasurer. Yeah. He'll probably they're automatically covered under our insurance. insurance. That's a whole so we could thing, do it that way. Yeah. But, but he wouldn't be insurance. covered by insurance. Ronnie was down the other day. He said he was going to put a bid in, and it was like his bid is going to be time plus materials, <laughs> no number. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, the other contractors would either have to provide proof of insurance and what other other proof they need, or they would have to sign the. His, but if he's working on town time because he's a works for the town, he would he'd be covered under our insurance, right. obviously. Yeah, yeah. she said yeah. it's probably. Yeah, he is a town employee, and um, 
You'd have to write a bid, though. You'd have to write a bid. You know, yeah. we wouldn't assume that we're going to pay him what we pay him as a town employee. That's mm -hmm. exactly right. Yeah. Um, okay. You can ask for more. Yeah. 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 But then, if he's not on the payroll, he wouldn't be covered by insurance. Correct. If he's not an employee. Right. Yeah. No. If he's not employed. working, if he's not yeah. working payroll hours, so I should if say. If he's not working as an employee, then he's uh -huh. on his own. So that's. The he could sign a waiver too. I mean. Right. Yeah, he could sign a waiver. True. Yeah. 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 It can be talked mm -hmm. about. Mm -hmm. So he's going to look at the building and mm -hmm. give her a, a rough quote or whatever? Yeah, go see what needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Okay, anything else for the town highway report? Do we have any other questions? No. All right, um, and let me just make sure that... <laughs> no, yep, so we'll Good. Okay, so um, I would like to make a motion that we... Um, the select board goes into executive session citing 1 VSA section 313A2 and 1 VSA section 313A1E. I'll second that. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Aye.